and the sponsors of this Hall of Honor project. I stand in for our late president, Colonel Les Basham, who died suddenly last month, and I may add, he is very much missed. It is good for us to be gathered in this hallowed place of remembrance of our regiment's war dead. I have a personal interest in this project in that a number of my comrades are listed here from World War II. We are indeed privileged today to welcome to our dedication of this Hall of Honor our Colonel-in-Chief, the Right Honorable Countess Montbatten of Burma, CDJP, and who is the patron of the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry Association. It is my pleasure as president of the association also to welcome and to introduce to you Brigadier General Stuart Graham, CD, under whose auspices as colonel of the regiment this project grew and who only yesterday relinquished his appointment of Colonel of the Regiment to Major General Herbert Pitts, MCCD, who too is with us today. <coughs> it is now time for me to turn over the direction of the service to the person to whom we are truly indebted for this project. <coughs> Association through President through the years 1984 until just this last summer of 1989. The man who conceived the idea of the Hall of Honor, who singularly promoted the concept, who raised in good part the necessary finances, and all along shepherded construction. I think he was here every day and leading up to this dedication. I give you Mr. Rod Middleton, the conceiver and director of this project. Rod. President Larry, thank you very much for those kind words. I would like to add my own word of welcome 
to our patron, Lady Patricia, and to our new Colonel of the Regiment, Major General Pitts and Mrs. Pitts. It also gives me great pleasure to welcome uh, Vice Patrons of the Association, General and Mrs. Brown, Colonel and Mrs. Sutherland, and I do regret that Brigadier Gen or General Cammy Ware was unable to be with us today, but called to send you all his kindest wishes. Distinguished guests, ladies and fellow Patricias, this is a very proud day for the PPCLI Association. In a few moments, our patron will dedicate the PPCLI Memorial Hall of Honor, a memorial that pays tribute to those 1,784 Patricias who gave their lives in time of war. Our regiment's war dead lie in military cemeteries in far-off lands. Their gravestones are to be found in Belgium and in France, in Italy and Holland, the United Kingdom, and in far-off Korea and Japan. Many have no known graves from the First World War, lost as they were in the morass and the horror of those terrible shell-torn battlefields. But now, their names are inscribed here for all to see, the decorated and the undecorated, the colonels and the privates, the chaplain and the doctor, the captains and the corporals, men of all ranks, men from all walks of life, men from all corners of our great land, but Patricia's all. 1,318 fallen from World War I, 327 fallen from World War II, 138 who fell in Korea, and one who was killed in Palestine on peacekeeping duties. Let this memorial serve to remind all who enter its revered sanctum of the sacrifice made by so many so far from home and so long ago in the defense of all those principles that we, as freedom-loving people, enjoy and hold so dear. I now call upon the chaplains, Captain Fletcher and Captain Jingra, to conduct the service of dedication. I thank you. Our opening hymn is The Son of God Goes Forth to War.
us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of your faithful servants who, having laid down their lives for the causes of freedom and peace, now find their eternal rest with you. Be with us, we pray, as we dedicate and bless this hall of honor to their memory and to the dream of peace and justice for which they died. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated for a reading from Holy Scripture? The reading is from the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 3 to 9. But the souls of the just are in God's hand, and torment shall not touch them. In the eyes of foolish men, they seem to be dead. Their departure was reckoned as a defeat, and their going from us a disaster. But they are at peace, for though in the sight of men they may be punished, they have a sure hope of immortality. And after a little chastisement, they will receive great blessings, because God has tested them and found them to be worthy like gold in a crucible, he put them to the proof and found them acceptable like an offering burnt whole upon the altar. In the moment of God's coming to them, they will kindle into flame like sparks that sweep through stubble. They will be judges and rulers over the nations of the world, and the Lord shall be their king forever and ever. Those who have put their trust in him shall understand that he is true, and the faithful shall attend upon him in love. They are his chosen, and grace and mercy shall be theirs. Here endeth the reading. In loving memory of those whose names are inscribed herein, we dedicate and bless this hall of honor in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May this hall of honor be for all who visited a reminder of the great price which was paid for our freedom and peace, and a reminder as well of our duty to uphold and to cherish that peace all days of our lives. Mm -hmm. To the glory of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. I would just like to say what a very great honor it is for me to be able to unveil this memorial, standing as it does at the very heart and center of this wonderful building, which will eventually be finished as a museum second to none to record the lives of four great regiments. We've heard over the names of 1,784 men inscribed on Canadian granite round these walls. It's very difficult, I think, to think of numbers as meaning anything. But it did occur to me that 1,784 is, in fact, not far short of the entire strength of the three battalions of today's regiment, and twice the strength of the original patricians. And yet, although these names are here for these men who gave their lives for their country and for their fellow human beings, the regiment is certainly not dead. We continue as a regiment as strong as ever. I'm sure that everybody in this room has probably some name here which will mean something very near, very dear, and will find this a very emotional occasion. 
and I have very, very emotional feelings of being asked to unveil this memorial. Closing him, O oh God, our help in ages to come.
Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Lady Patricia, distinguished guests, members of the PPCLA Association and your ladies, fellow Patricias. Today is a proud and unique moment in, in time in the history of our regiment. The Memorial Hall of Honor preserves in one place the memory of the human sacrifice of her past and will provide an enduring message for the future that war, despite the patriotism and comradeship that it engenders, is not a glorious event, but is a tragedy to be avoided at all costs. And now, ma'am, on behalf of the PBCLI Association and the Old Guard, it is my honor to thank you for your gracious participation here today, and my pleasure to thank all our assembled guests for joining us for this memorable occasion, and to invite you to be our guests at a reception in the museum foyer. Thank you.
It's going to run again this year. Yeah. 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 Still can't sketch. Why not? I don't know.
That's one of the men there. Yeah. Great effort and well, well worth all the effort, I'm sure. Well, I look forward to seeing it again. Right. Oh, you will. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.